Well, hello, all you wonderful people in here, online, out there. Welcome, greetings um, to all of you and all beings in creation, including the plant realms who are with us today. Um, it is with great pleasure uh, that I give voice to our deep admiration and appreciation to you, Prune for creating this wonderful book. It is so beautiful, and I'm so happy to have seen you come to this moment. Um, and um, I just want to have us all raise a glass and express our pre appreciation to all the work that went into this beautiful book. Mm. To Prune. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm. Now, this is also a special time for you, Prune. It's your Chiron return. My Chiron return. So I also wanted to say a very, very happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank um, you. And then I, you know, I know you wanted to, um, um, to, to mention some people who have been involved in helping you bring this book to fruition. Yes, I do. But first, I really want to say thank you to everyone here. It's amazing sitting here and just looking at you all from, like, maybe not quite all over the world, but from quite a big stretch of the world. And we have over a thousand people joining us on live stream as well. And they are all over the world. So a big welcome to you wherever you are. I'm really delighted to welcome you to this Eden Project. And it's a very special place for me. I remember when I very first came here, I was carrying my son, who was about five days old. We didn't have a sling, so we just tied him on a blanket around me. And, and uh, my dad really loved the Eden Project. And of course, my dad died nearly a year ago. And the book is dedicated to dad. So I couldn't, I couldn't open this without honoring him and saying a big thank you to him and all of my family. Many of my family are here. I've got two brothers, two sisters here. <laughs> and it feels really, really beautiful to be with you all right now. Now, Sandra, I'm going to embarrass you by asking <laughs> you to stand up. We have in the back there, Sandra. And when you look at all of these amazing illustrations, this one of the chakras, this one of the Dantians and the Daiji pole, that is the amazing woman <laughs> who created them. Uh, it was an amazing experience. This is the first time I'm meeting Sandra in person. So we, um, yeah, we got together and we spent fabulous time. And I would tell her what I see energetically and then boom, this image would appear. So really, the book would be a far poorer book if it wasn't for her amazing illustrations in it where we can really get the visuals. And also there's another illustrator. You'll see Sandra's are very much these kind of big glorious energy anatomy images, but there's also some fun, almost cartoony images in there. And that's Alicia. Now she is in Copenhagen right now, so you couldn't join us, but I hope you're there Alicia and know that we are great, very grateful. And then I think the other people to really say thank you, the book would not be there in its physical form without my team members, and especially Nat and Alison. Nat coached me through all the times I was like, I don't know what to say, and I don't know what to write, and haven't really written much this week. Nat was there really guiding and holding that space for this creation. So the entire team, amazing, and yeah, big gratitude there. Yeah. I also wanted to say a thanks to the, to the Eden Project for hosting mm. us. It's such a beautiful location. We have this amazing background um, and, the, and also for the food and, and, and drink um, that the Eden Project has provided. So thank you to the Eden Project mm. team as well. Yeah, very much. 
Well, um, we, we have some questions and, and comments that we've gathered and wanted to, to, to raise with you, Fran. Um, you know, one of the big themes was people asking about the process of creating the book. Um, and, you know, this is something I was very interested in as well. I've for a long time been hoping that you would write a book. I love learning from you, and I love books, so it just seemed mm. natural that the two would go together. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask you is, what was the, the genesis of the book? How did that come in? And um, also, it's a bit of a two-part question. Often, when people are in the midst of creative processes, there are obstacles or resistance that shows up. Um, so was this a straight line process? Were there twists and turns, or did you notice some of those kind of bumps along the road? Oh, there were bumps, for sure. <laughs> there were bumps. Um, as for the genesis of the book, I knew several years ago I really wanted to write. I really wanted to... I wrote a lot of articles, blogs, courses, but I wanted something that kind of contained the essence. But I wasn't ready. I tried. I remember sitting in my kitchen in Canada, so we're going back 15 years now, and even having a very similar title to this, and I started writing it, and I realized I know what I want to get down. I know the importance of it, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready to like find the essence of how to say it. Mm. I could have leathered for quite a long time, but I, I wanted to be in a place of my own consciousness where I could really like find the essence and make it playful. And I just wasn't, I wasn't able to at that time. So then a few years ago, I think maybe even after a pint with you in an Irish <laughs> pub, um, it really started to land more and more as an idea. And then it was just the process of writing. And that's deeply challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to yeah. commit every day to sitting down and writing the next bit and the next bit, and especially when I was also really busy teaching and mm -hmm. living life and raising my kids. So it was, there was lots and lots of kind of hurdles. And I think that's where the two really key things for me. One was having support and accountability. I really want to, I know many of you on the live stream and some of you here were in the book focus groups that I had. Who was? I know you guys. Are, yeah, Vicky. Yeah, Ewan. So it was a beautiful experience over about six months where I would write a chapter and then would send it out to 30 people who were supporting the process. And they'd come back and say all of the lovely things, which, you know, thank you, we're grateful, we wanted them. But also all of the things they didn't like. Hmm. Didn't understand this. That was really convoluted. That could have been more simple. And that focus group was amazing for kind of giving me a broader language and understanding. So mm -hmm. there was lots of kind of consciously put in anchors and pegs to help me along the way because it's not easy and it's a really big book <laughs> i was kind of surprised when i actually yeah. got hold of it i'm like blimey i didn't expect it to be this big right. um so there's right. a lot of words in there yeah. <laughs> it's, right it's bigger than anything you've written before yeah. right totally and also and, just on that note yeah. um you'll notice if you've had a look at it that the text is big and that was really conscious. I wanted it, one, to be available to slightly older eyes, <laughs> because many of us are slightly older now. Um, but also, of course, we have amazing, amazing children coming through into our world who are now in their you know, mid-teens, mid-twenties even. And they hold so much neurodivergence, really holding that kind of understanding of the expansiveness of consciousness that we're working with and that actually text needs to be much more appropriate to all of us so that mm. we can kind of absorb the vibration of it rather than peering at it and having it move on the page or any of the other ways that neurodivergent people are really working with. So it's conscious, but of course it also made the book a little bit bigger. <laughs> I don't mind at all. No, I need it. <laughs> yeah. I want, you know, you mentioned that... Uh, at a certain point, you, you sat down and you just weren't ready. Was part of that journey interacting with people and understanding what it takes for them to understand something that to you is just 
an inborn part of your understanding or intuitively known to you? Yeah, I think that's a really, really big part of it, Brad. Like, because I've always been able to see energy, mm -hmm. I kind of assumed everybody did. Mm -hmm. That's totally normal, totally natural. And then I realized little by little by little <laughs> that maybe that wasn't so normal and maybe I wasn't so normal. It's a continual conversation we have with my family. Who's the normal one? I normally get bottom of the list. Um, I think I'm top of the list. So <laughs> there is that place of, of learning what other people perceived energetically mm -hmm. because we all do. Every one of us understands we're energetic beings. We get all of those cues. But to understand where those kind of boundaries were, often I'd be teaching and I'd say, well, you know, obviously such and such, and I'd just see blank faces and think, oh, well, maybe this isn't so obvious. And then having to backtrack, and uh, Rob's been one of my biggest teachers for that. Often in a class, I would say something and he'd be like, I don't know what you mean. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, well, we better go back a little bit more. Yeah. So definitely there was that. But I think even more importantly, I wasn't, in a place myself to start really understanding the essence of the soul. Mm. You know, I had to go through more experiences. I had to experience mm -hmm. more losses. I had to experience more loves. Mm. I just had to experience more before mm. I could really understand the flow of it energetically. Like when I write your radiant soul, it's because we have a core of energy and then we have a radiant energy. So that core energy really being the soul energy. That image there shows you the sun star above your head and mm. all of the information from the cosmos comes in there. It moves through your and every single one of us, every single human and animal through the core into the earth star and at the same time the other way around. So that's your core soul, but that's not just going to stay there. That's going to radiate out into mm. every part of your life. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the more we understand it, the more we get to really realize that we impact every single part of the web of life. Mm -hmm. And we have choices. We can choose not to activate that ra radiance or we can choose to activate it. So that's where the kind of importance came in of really tracking that energy and then wanting to write a book that people could really say, yes, I want to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I want to be that radiance because right now in our world, we need it. Mm -hmm. We yeah. need everybody to be able to show up in their radiance so that actually every single structure in existence is able to evolve. Because yeah. if we don't, this beautiful replica of the natural world may be all that's left. So to be able to show up fully in ourselves, connect with other people, and show up fully and, and really co-create and change the world, mm. then that's what that book's about. Yeah, I love how you said that it's a choice, and I think that's one of the learnings for most people to yeah. realize, oh, actually, I have some say in this. <laughs> I, I, I'm able to do something about this. I didn't think I was able to do anything about this. Once they realize, oh, actually, I have some agency here. There's some things I can do. And then the next step is, okay, let's learn what those are and then commit to doing them. Yeah. Um, and do them for yourself and do them for your beloveds and do them mm, for the world. And suddenly yeah. we've got big change happening. Yeah. We've got empowered change mm. instead of that kind of, we've all experienced that place where we watch the news or we walk down the street and you feel that real like, blimey, as a global collective right now, we're really struggling. The world's mm. struggling, societies are struggling. Yeah. But actually, we hold so much power to change that. Mm. And if we can activate that into that collective consciousness, wow, mm -hmm. we are we're gonna be in a very, very different way. And the kind of ironic thing is that Nobody wants us to be in the crisis that we're in now. Nobody's sitting there saying, I'd really love to wreck the world for my grandchildren. Nobody. Everybody wants it to be better. Mm -hmm. It's just how do we get there as a collective? Mm -hmm. How do we move from that place of feeling really disempowered into being able to say, yeah, let's bring the change that we want for our kids, for ourselves, for the world. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I know for me that was, you know, during my journey, learning the fact that we have some agency around that was, was kind of like a, a light bulb. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. I can do something about that. Um, the, w one other thread I wanted to, to pull on is um, that you mentioned that you needed certain experiences to go through them to, in order to be ready to write the book. What, one of the things I love about the book is that you do bring in that wisdom and um, and learnings from experiences throughout your life, and you're, you're distilling, you know, a lot of the essence of that and giving it to us in this beautiful book. So mm, thank you so much for that. For that. Yeah. Um, I, another thread you you mentioned fun. Why was it important to you to to bring some some fun into the book as well? But when we think of the word radiance, mm -hmm. yeah, for me. If we reclaim it from the cosmetic industry, then radiance is that place of experiencing the kind of connectivity of creation. Mm. That's one of the ways I define it. Mm -hmm. Like we're all in the process of continually becoming, continually emerging. Mm. I think that's one of the challenges is we think that we're sort of complete. Mm -hmm. We think this is us or this is the world or mm -hmm. this is the financial system or the political system and it's not. We're always emerging. Mm -hmm. So we can emerge through strain, through stress, but we can also emerge through connection and love mm -hmm. and laughter and community. So mm -hmm. that place, I come from a very um, joyful family mm -hmm. and I believe the world to be an immensely joyful place. Even when we drove down the drive into here, there was a little mother duck. Literally, as we turned off the road into the Eden Project Drive, a little mother duck and seven ducklings just like <laughs> wobbling along behind them. And the, the, they're not stressed. Right. They're not wondering, yeah. oh, how do I be more me? <laughs> or how do I pay the bills? You know, they're thinking, Life's cool and I'm part of it. <laughs> and I think as humans, we have that ability. That is our natural birthright to know that we are beloved of the earth, to know that we are beloved of each other. Mm. And actually, how do we reconnect to that? And yes, we can do it through serious conversations, but often radiance and play and fun will hardwire it in our systems much quicker. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, speaking of hardwiring, um, I wanted to read a quote from, from the book. This is from the chapter, Understand Your Energy, Understand Your Life. It is mind-blowingly beautiful to watch the way human energy fields move in constant patterns of unfolding and enfolding. Huge patterns, tiny patterns, patterns that weave all the different aspects together, even as they hold specific and separate vibrations within the whole. We are literally hardwired for balance, health, cohesion, and interco interconnectedness at every level. And, and you know, when I read that, I thought, oh, we're hardwired for that. That means it's, it's been within us the whole time. You know, the world tells us you need to go out there and search for optimal yeah. health or for balance or, you know, it's, it's out there somewhere. You need to search for it. Yeah. And you're telling us it's been with us the whole time yeah. and we just need to connect with it. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of Dorothy's ruby red slippers, right? We just it was need to click with her heels. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true. One of the things, like we have an amazing biomedical model of health don't we? Mm, mm -hmm. like if you have an emergency situation if you need acute care wow mm -hmm. it's going to do amazing amazing work within your biochemistry within your physiology but it's part of the picture and it feels to me that holism and a holistic approach to any health is so key and our systems are always looking energetically to come into balance, mm. always looking to come into harmony, never, ever, ever an exception. There's never a system that I've seen that says, yeah, this is it. I'll settle for this. Mm. Like I'm ill or I'm depressed or, or, or mm -hmm. that's okay. Never. Like every part of the six different systems are looking to come back into balance. And when we know that, then we begin to stop tracking the ailments, mm -hmm. stop tracking the problems, mm -hmm. 
stop looking for the problems yeah. and beginning to think, how can I nurture the whole? How can I nourish myself? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And from that, such a radically different perspective to the mainstream medical model. Yeah. That for me, that's where we're really mo moving to now in our mm -hmm. concepts of health, of wholeness. Mm -hmm. um, so we're absolutely hardwired for it. Every part from that amazing interface of the core soul into the radiant soul, it's designed for us to be healthy. There's a template of health that gets created at that point. Mm -hmm. Now that template of health isn't a template of disease. Mm -hmm. It's not a template of, yeah, it's okay. It's a template of vitality. It's the same template that grew that tree. Mm -hmm. It's the same template that all of the world buzzes with. It's one of mm -hmm. creation. So mm -hmm. how do we activate that? That's my big question and mm -hmm. I hope that that book brings a lot of answers to that. Yeah, because everyone's had bumps along the way, right, in their lives, yeah. whether it's um, something external or it's in the emotional realm or otherwise that, yeah. that bumps them off of that kind of template of health, right? Um, but it's just, it's been there all the time, right? And, and so that knowledge about Oh, it's there, and we can connect with it. To me, that's so empowering, yeah. and it it creates agency where before there might have just been a despair yeah. or confusion or settling. <laughs> right? Yeah, that place of disheartenment. Like, how mm -hmm. do we move past disheartenment in any situation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, on the same theme of being connected. Um, another ex excerpt from the book. This is from the chapter, Living Your Biggest Life. When you engage with the wisdom and the energy of your energetic core, it invites and inspires you to move in flow and alignment with the energy within and around you. This mindful soul connection allows you to fully embrace your essential place as a co-creator, not only of your world, but the world in which we all live. I really love that because Again, it's sort of opposite to the general world's understanding of how we connect with people. The general world's understanding of connecting with people and, and um, is it's something out there, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's separate from yourself. You don't kind of think of connecting with yourself first, but this you know shows that that way of thinking is sort of putting the cart before the horse, right? And actually deep connection to ourself allows us the ability to connect with others and interact with the world and, and kind of live in harmony with the world. Um, again, such a vital message for this time in humanity. Yeah, but you know, and we all know, it's not a new message, is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the mystics, the ancient ones, right. they have been telling us this for ever since humanity began. Mm. So I think that's one of the things that I love of the energy of these times. It's like we get to remember things. Mm. We get to reawaken what's been not lost in our communities. It hasn't been lost. It's always been there as a really essential pulse. But somehow the mainstream narratives didn't focus on it. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And so now we get to actually think, what do we want as the story of our life? Mm. And you know, if there was one thing that I would love that book to inspire in people, it's a love for themselves. Mm. Because from that place, everything changes in your world. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of my own journey with that place of kind of self-love. When I really got to the place of being able to say, I am awesome. <laughs> I'm amazing. I deserve to be alive right now. Mm -hmm. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to, to feel like I belong in this world. And actually that world and this world is the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that world and this world is the same thing. Mm -hmm. And once, once you can embrace that about yourself, once you have the capacity to love yourself with warts and all, then actually your capacity to love other people is forever changed. It's mm. true. Yeah? Mm. And then your capacity to love the world and the care for it. You want to make a difference. You want to bring that sort of inspiration into action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, it, you know, what struck me as you said that is that a lot of people need a because after I love myself. Yeah. Um, and it is it because that the world recognizes. I love myself because of these achievements yeah. or because I look amazing uh, according to the world's yeah. standards of beauty or you know, because I've accomplished these things. Um, but I'm not hearing a because when you, when you say that. And that seems to me so liberating. It's so different than maybe um, the common messages we get from the world. Yeah, yeah, very mm. much. And, I, and of course, I had my own personal journey with that, mm. feeling like, oh, I should do more. I should be more. I'm a total perfectionist anyway, so it's difficult <laughs> to do or be more than a total perfectionist. <laughs> but I had a real journey over the last however many decades to get to the place where it's like, huh, actually, I'm alive. Therefore, I'm part of this web of life. Mm -hmm. So I'm as important as every single other human. I'm as important as that tiny flower. Mm. I'm as important as the bee, as anything. Like we each have our thread within that web of life. Mm -hmm. And we can choose to have a thread that's kind of dim, or we can choose to have a thread that's really vibrant and radiant. Yeah. Which one do you choose? Which one do you choose for yourself? Which one do you choose for your beloveds? Which one do you choose for your kids? That's the place. Yeah, and it's very different from the mainstream, especially the, the marketing, advertising mm -hmm. narratives that we get that mm -hmm. you're, you're enough as long as you buy this special thing. <laughs> or once you bought that one, well, that won't last for very long, so you better buy this one as well, and then you're almost enough, mm -hmm. and so it goes on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do we actually get to the place where we can feel that with all of our failings, if we choose to see them like that, mm -hmm. with all of our gifts, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're perfect, I'm perfect, we're all perfect. Mm -hmm. And from there we get to show up in a whole different way. Yeah. Yeah. It's loving those imperfections and recognizing that that tree doesn't have a consciousness that says, oh, well, that tree's a little bit taller than me, and so I'm, oh, I'm not doing well enough. Mm -hmm. That tree says, this is a community of trees, and my roots will go out, and I'll send the phytochemicals to communicate with that tree, make sure that we're all in relationship. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I guess there's a, a seasonality, too, to the trees, right? They they understand seasons, um, uh, and to me, some of this being, seeing the beauty in yourself doesn't say, there's nothing about myself that I want to improve, but it says, at this moment, I am I'm beautiful, I'm awesome. Um, I still have these things I'm working on, but that's okay, and actually, it's kind of awesome in itself yeah. because, um, you know, those woundings or failings are giving me an opportunity to call on gifts that I might not have known I had or might not have developed if I, if I didn't have those imperfections, as we might call them. Yeah, right. absolutely. Being real, being authentic, showing up just as you are. If you're in a bad mood, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You can work on it. You can make sure that you can nourish that bad mood so that it dissolves, but mm. we're not, we never were designed to be a kind of perfect model of a human being. We're humans, like we're messy. We're really messy. Mm. I, I've been playing with the concept of like a human being. What a weird concept. <laughs> like we're a human yeah. being. It's like, well, we're a human being what? Like, what are we being? <laughs> well, we're being human, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. Does it mean to wear the right clothes and to have a certain amount of money in your bank account and to have the right car? Or does it mean to like be living your life fully, whatever that is? Mm. And I think my definition of it would definitely be much more, I'm a human being, the amazing soul. Mm. that I am. You're a human being, the amazing soul that you are. Mm. And we can pull those words and put a different energy through them. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that twist. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and then um, as we are being those things, um, it seems like it's so much easier to connect with other people and love them because we realize, oh, they're those beautiful beings, humans being those wonderful things as well, yeah. right? They are they are being perfectly themselves, yeah. right? And um, uh, again, it's kind of connecting to that core idea of ourselves makes it easier to connect to other people. Absolutely, and I think that's where one of the things with understanding your energy anatomy really comes in. Mm. Because if you can understand like what's going on in your energy systems, why maybe you're in a bad mood today, or mm -hmm. why maybe every time you have a memory of your childhood, then triggers start showing up. You know, if we can actually understand our energy anatomy and know how to bring those tiny shifts. Mm. My friend Jyotish uses the word micro practices, and I love that word. It's <laughs> like, how do we bring in those little micro practices in our day mm -hmm. that just kind of self correct us again? We come home to ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the exciting thing for me. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. Before we move to the next question, I just wanted to say there are a ton of congratulatory comments coming in online in the chat. So I <laughs> wanted to give a shout out to that. Um, the, the next um, excerpt I wanted to, to read is from the Your Wild Wisdom chapter. And one of the things I've absolutely loved learning from you is about the daily sacred. So um, it's a little bit about that. So here's the quote. Ceremony exists in the imaginal realm and opens gateways between you and the cosmos. In our modern day societies, we are very used to the ceremonies of birthdays, weddings, and funerals, but every moment of every day is an invitation to engage in the ceremony of your life. Consciously lighting a candle and blessing your day is a ceremony. You know, I, I, I love learning this from you because um, I have this desire to have the daily sacred in my life but I came from a background that says it must be a certain way. And then uh, after a while, I was like, well, I don't want to do it that way anymore. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have a way to do it or even a conception that it could be as simple as you're saying it is. Um, so do you believe me? I do. <laughs> I do a lot of um, simple mm -hmm. things every day. And even on an incredibly busy day, yeah. if it's three in the morning when I'm doing that simple thing, I'm still going to do it yeah. <laughs> to, to bring that in. I have to say, a lot of people ask me, I don't understand how you work the hours you do. It's, I mean, this is a lot of it. This, yeah. um, the centering yeah. um, uh, you, that, that I've learned from you and others and the, the grounding and the those, those simple acts of kind of bringing in that simple ceremony. Yeah. yeah. Ceremony mm -hmm. is such an, and in a little while we'll get to work with an earth healing ceremony, but it's such an amazing gateway into a much bigger place. Like if we think of the human as being physical and emotional, cognitional, and a soul as well, any ceremony connects you into the sacred. It aligns all three of those vibrations and connects you into the sacred. And mm -hmm. once you are in that place of connectivity, mm -hmm. magic happens. Mm. Like those places of synchronicity or when manifestations are a really buzzword at the moment, isn't it? Mm. When you're, you're able to flow in your life mm -hmm. because, and that's the other, um, definitely the other section of the cosmos that I should honor in the creation of the book, which is, you know, spirit, mm. that place of being guided, sitting down to write and like finding when I read it back, I thought, wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. I had no idea because I didn't write it. Mm -hmm. I don't think quite frankly, at this point of human evolution, I don't think a single one of us have ever had an original idea. We're tapping into something that mm. is massive there. So mm. it's like that cosmic energy is always waiting 
to guide us into the next place if we can be open to it. And mm -hmm. I really love what you brought up there, Brad, about the fact that you grew in a religious environment that actually said, this is how you do something. This mm -hmm. is the definition of soul. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like over the last 2,000 years, 1,500 years, we've lost the language of soul. We've lost mm. the language of the sacred. It became attached only to a, a specific religions. Mm -hmm. And actually, the, the religions are absolutely beautiful if that's what resonates with your soul. But there's far more ways to mm -hmm. kind of bring in those recognition of the little <laughs> birds or the singing, uh, bring in recognition as you walk down the street of, wow, what a blessing it is. Thank you. Thank you, world. So it's yeah. those tiny ceremonies, those daily sacreds, just keep aligning you to a far bigger truth. Mm. And of course, one of the big stories of the past while, few centuries, is the story of separation. Mm. That concept that only the fittest survive, that to get ahead in life, you have to run, you have to run hard, and you probably have to trample other people in your way as you go. And that's not the story of the cosmos in mm -hmm. any way. Mm -hmm. It's connectivity, mm -hmm. support, interaction. <laughs> so it's, a, yeah. it's that place of um, engaging in the creative, life-affirming impulses in life. Mm. Because energy is just information. Energy is just waves of information. Mm -hmm. And when we can activate and tap into those life-affirming waves mm. rather than the ones for me there's we have two options it's life affirming or it's death affirming there's nothing in the middle <laughs> so what do you choose do you choose your life to be about life mm -hmm. or not right. yeah. well um I, I love that that you brought that up you know we, the eden project is built on an old mine and all of cornwall really was a a, a place of um you know, such intensive mining, but yeah. it's been going on for thousands of years. And maybe at first it was, oh, you know, um, we need a little bit of this tin so we can make bronze, right? Yeah. Um, and then at some point it got a little bit out of balance, yeah. right? And so a lot of the land was, was kind of stripped bare. Is there a certain reason you chose um, to have the earth healing ceremony here? Yeah, yeah, very much. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. What the Eden Project has created in these last 23 years mm. is inspirational. Mm. And its big mandate is education of sustainability. So, I mean, mm. it fits right into uh, where we all need to be in the world. Mm. But also, of course, we're in the middle of a massive quarry. This is a um, China clay quarry all around us, for those who haven't been reading the signs on it. And this isn't what the landscape should have looked like, would have looked like. This has been ravished from mm. the earth, yeah? Mm -hmm. And yet something beautiful has grown up out of it. So it felt like it was a really, it was a profound place with big potential mm. to bring that radiance in here. So in a little while, I'm going to be asking all of us to really work with our own radiance. But I'm wondering, Brad, if there's any kind of questions out here mm, can we yeah. open that up is there any questions we've been talking a long while so <laughs> we've got mic so if you want to ask a question then you need to have a mic but is there anyone with any questions about anything i've been saying or that you've seen in the book or does everybody just want another glass of wine <laughs> 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 any questions and also an invitation uh, live streaming as well at home. If you have any questions, this is a good time. Mm -hmm. You have them on your phone. This is a good sort time of. to yeah. pop them in as well. Mm -hmm. No questions. Yeah. Hey, Sarah. If there was one key message you want to give from your book, what would it be? That you, that every one of us is immensely powerful. That's it. And how we choose to use that huge gift is up to us. We have choice. We really have choice. Anyone else? We've got a quiet bunch. Very unusual, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Rob. 
Yeah, is there going to be a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is, Rob. I've got the next four in my brain. It's just finding the time to take them from my brain and onto that piece of paper. But I really hope there will be. We'll see how this one's received first. Is there any questions from the live streamers? Did anybody pop that in? Oh, we've got one more question here. I was really interested in what you were saying about children and young people and neurodivergency, and I wondered what you were doing to try to get that message out to that younger generation. Mm. Yeah, it's a really, um, I am not a younger generation. So there are some barriers there, yeah? Um, but essentially, the first thing is really get, get the book out. Get the book out to support the mums, the dads, the sole guardians of these kids. They're amazing. We've got several in the room right now. Amazing kids. And the education system as it is, isn't serving them. Mm. Yeah? Our societies as they are, can't quite meet their needs. So getting the message out to support the parents, the family members, the teachers, the amazing people who are working with caring for these kids. Um, that's step one. And then we'll go to TikTok, and I'll be <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, a couple uh, questions coming in online. Do you ever feel it's too late to start? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I almost want to stand up and shout that one. It's <laughs> never too late to start. Yeah. That is a fabulous and crazy question. <laughs> it's like even the fact that you're asking that question means that your soul knows there's a different way, that there is a way of balance, of harmony. We've got to find it. We've got to find it. We don't really have a choice anymore. We can't say, well, I'm going to keep using oil. Yeah, it's going to be fine. We'll figure it out somehow. No, we, we don't have that choice. So is it too late? It's never too late. And also it's never like everything you've done, everything all of us have done up to this point is perfect. It's been your experiencing of your soul path, your life purpose. It's perfect. And what can we do differently? What, what can we do in a way that impacts our own health more, impacts the global health more? Hmm. Um, just, I didn't want to ask a very commercial question right before we go to ceremony, but I'm going to anyway. People are asking, where is the best place to purchase the, the beautiful book globally? Um, I understand that it's available at major online retailers. <laughs> Does that mean I can't um, say the word? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, it's, it's up to you, but also um, some independent retailers yeah. as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, um, there are, we at Prune Harris Limited are a B Corp, so we always try and work local and sustainable. And some of those major online <laughs> distributors are not local or ethical in any way. At the same time, they have 99% of the book market. <laughs> so there is understanding that please buy that book and love it from wherever you can. Here in Britain, I, um, I use Hive, hive.co.uk. They're an amazing um, online distributor, but when you buy the book, it gives money to your local bookstore. Mm. So it's a way of like supporting local um, but they have all of the choice that you can get in some of the bigger online distributors Very too. Cool. Yeah, Very so cool. that's what. I love that idea. And I love the name as well. Like it gives that idea of connectivity, yeah. actually supporting community. So we yeah. will put the link in the chat. All right, brilliant. And then also um, we will um, put some more information in the chat. Fab. And I think with that, we're ready to move on. We're going to move on. Brilliant. Well, I would love to lead us in this quarry and from all over the world in, in an earth healing ceremony. It's gonna be about 10 minutes. That daily sacred can be short and truly change our world. So I would love us to do that. And all I ask of you is be comfortable. Wherever you are sitting, just pop that, maybe have your hands empty. We might be placing our hands on certain places and at home, just the same, just be comfortable. Okay.
Okay. So let's start with just placing our hands on our hearts. And bring your awareness to the places that your body is touching the floor or a chair or a sofa if you're at home. And just invite your own being, your own energy to settle in, to settle close to yourself. Invite it home. Any of the busyness of the day, any of the busyness of the week or year or life. Just breathe into the knowledge that right now you can invite that life affirming energy into your body. Let's take three breaths here together and just invite them to be nourishing. That's all you need from your breath, from the oxygen, from the energy you bring in. You need it to nourish your body. Nourish your mind. Nourish your spirit. And from here, just from where you're sitting, let's bring the hands up the body a little. So you're tracing all the way up the midline. And I want you to raise your hands above your head where you have that amazing hub of energy, your sun star. Now, if you haven't seen the pictures of it, then let me describe it for you. It's the most amazing, golden, vibrant light. Imagine a sun that you could hold between the palms of your hands. So just think, visualize, feel, imagine that golden, radiant light. And when you're ready, you're going to bring your hands down the front of your body. And you're just going to let them trace all the way down the front of the body, but stay sitting, stay relaxed until you're holding them down towards the ground because underneath your feet, there's another amazing energy hub, your earth star. So as your palms are pointing towards your feet, then you're activating, inviting harmony and radiance of that earth star. And you can pop your hands on your knees or on your thighs, but I want you to keep that visual of the energy from your hands down your legs going into that beautiful connected earth star below your feet. And from there, drop deeper. Drop your awareness deeper into the space beneath that. The space beneath the crust of the earth deeper and deeper. And from that place of connectivity, I want you to bring to mind a little piece of the earth that you love unreservedly, with no conditions. Maybe it's your garden. Maybe it's a place you visited once. Maybe it's an ancestral home or somewhere where you grew up. But really bring that place to mind. Think about how you feel when you're at that place. Think about the smells, the bird song, if there is any, the sounds all around you. And think about the love that you feel for that place. Feel that love.
right now your energy system is radiating that love through your energetic core, through your sun star, through your earth star, deep, deep into the earth and into the cosmos above your head. And with each breath you take in, you fuel that love, you fuel that radiant light. And with each breath you breathe out, it travels through your system to that place of connectivity in that global web of life. No effort. Breathing in and allowing that radiant light to move through you. Bringing your hands to your heart. Just continue to experience, feel, visualize, remember, think about the love you have for that one place. And now allow any other places that you love to move through your consciousness, to move through your mind, through your energy fields. It can be a whistle-stop tour of all of the places in the world that you love. Sounds like we've even got a plane mm -hmm. to take us to all of those places. Mm. And for a moment, think about the thousand people at home, the hundred people right here now sending that love into the earth, into the cosmos. Seeing each of yourselves as a speck of light in that cosmic connection. Knowing that your radiance is activating the ley lines of the earth, the earth grids, that you're fueling those lines with more energy, more compassion, more love, more light. Bringing that radiant healing and balance. You know, one of the big signs, ancient and modern, of energetic connection is the lemnus gate, the figure eight. So I want you to start tracing, drawing, being that lemnus gate. So you can think of it as the infinity sign or a figure eight lying down. So bring that over your own heart. That healing begins in your own body, your own heart. Bring it through your body, to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. To the plants, mm. to the amazing birds that have been singing to us. At home, make sure you're doing this to your room, your house, your garden, your city, your mountains, your prairies, your deserts. Knowing that we're connecting and activating that great web of life. When you're ready, you can bring your hands back to your heart. Give it a hug for doing such a big job. The daily sacred, simple and powerful. Mm. And with that, we are going to feel all loved up. <laughs> and finish that ceremony.
Thank you so much. And I wanted to mention, especially for those who are online and will want to hear this again and again, this will be uploaded to the website. So um, don't despair. This won't be the last time you can hear this. Um, uh, and um, um, yeah, I think um, that was the sort of last official announcement. But what I wanted to say is it would be wonderful if those who are watching on the live stream could put in the chat the first place um, that you thought of during the ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can play a game here in person as well to tell each other um, what it was. For me, it was a beautiful big cottonwood tree that was in my backyard when I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I haven't thought about it for so long, but it was such an important part of my growing up years. Um, so it's, um, you know, I think a, a beautiful thing to hear mm. what other people's experiences are. Yeah, fabulous. And also at home, please let us know where you are in the world. So where, mm -hmm. where you first connected to and where you are. Uh, for me, it was a beach that's about three miles away. Mm -hmm. Paul Keris okay. Beach, one of the places I go to again and again and again in my dreams, in my thoughts as I'm working, writing. Really special place for me. Mm -hmm. What about here? Where did... Shout out some of where you are. The garden, the garden mm -hmm. in Cornwall. <laughs> yeah. Parents' garden, grandparents', grandparents oh, garden. Oh, so that's like love upon love upon love. Amazing. Mm. Where else? Hampstead, Hampstead Heath. I thought you said uh, Amsterdam. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's good too. Where else? Brittany. Mm, very special place. One of our Celtic cousins. Mm. Anywhere else? Have we got any online coming in? I think we do. <laughs> Glowworms? No. Ah. Wow, we've got a lot coming in. Okay. Garden in, Bar in Bavaria. Looks like there's a lot of gardens. Um, meadow in Sweden. Faroe Islands, wonderful. Ooh, I want to go there. Yeah, northern woods and lakes in Minnesota. Okay, I have to give a shout out to New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Tapua Tahi Beach in New Zealand, um, Porth Beach in Newquay, a lot of, a lot of Cornwall, actually, um, an oak in the Black Forest, mm. amazing. Uh, yeah, I like that I'm not the only tree person here. Um, we have a couple more tree in my backyard. Chalice Well, mm -hmm. Glastonbury. Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah, very special place. Um, Padasjoki in Finland. Mm on a shore of a lake, beautiful. Um, Coventry, the uninhabited Greek island of Keros. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be Rob's uh, wife, Fran. <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, fabulous. In India, uh, we have Middle East, Spain. It looks like pretty much all around the world, mm. so beautiful. Um, yeah, sitting on my deck in the backyard. Uh, They're so beautiful because I think, you know, what it's giving me a vision of is if we took the globe right now and we looked at the energy of it, then suddenly there's all of these little kind of constellations of light, constellations of healing, and we're activating them. Mm. That's really, really special. Thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, mm. healing and, and gratitude. I see a lot of gratitude mm. here in the you know, kind of love they have for the place, but also gratitude for what it's done yeah. for them, right? And yeah. that's definitely the way I feel as well. Beautiful. Um, so, so that will be available um, for people to see in the chat online mm. as well. We have a long and beautiful list. That's awesome. Um, I, I just wanted to say thanks again to everyone who came in person and joined us online and to the plants. Mm -hmm. and all the other beings who have joined us, the birds, um, and leave to you for any last words. Uh, thanks, Brad. Well, uh, it was interesting, you know, you bring forward the gratitude. For me, I know that every step of my life could not have been as it has been, whether they were steps that were incredibly painful 
or steps that were absolutely blissful. They could not have been without every single person in my life. And that includes every student, everyone here, every family member, every friend. That every experience I've ever has has shaped me and shaped that book. Mm -hmm. And so we'll finish with a big thank you to everyone here, everyone there, and everyone who has been part of my life in whatever way. There's no such a big or a small way. Mm -hmm. Every single energetic interaction is massive. So just big, big gratitude. And yeah, very much looking forward to chatting with some of you in a minute and seeing you whenever we can get together. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.